know, you guys have been as big as, say, something like the Washington Times Online or bigger for years. You have all your print editions, one of the biggest independent publishers in the country now. And so I've got to say, uh, even before the Drudge Report was uh, covering it, and he helped break it all, you know, the dam in the last five years, World Net Daily has been covering Bilderberg and sending correspondents around. What is it like now to see the Washington Times covering it? Now the Washington Post here today, the Associated Press, the London Guardian, the dam is breaking. We were talking over at your office uh, just the other night, uh, Kevin, and you were very astute when you said, you know, they're going to be forced to cover it, and then they're going to make jokes about it, and that's not going to hold water. So, uh, Kevin, I'm going to hand the mic to you. I'm not going to sit here and even try to interview because there's one mic. I want you to just take your time breaking down your observations, what you've seen, and then uh, hand it over to your other associate, uh, Michael, there. Here you go, my friend. All right. Well, I think as we talked about yesterday, it's a game changer on a couple different levels. One, the fact that they actually have to have this discussion. This is the discussion that they can't win. I mean, the first thing that they have to do is try to ignore it and then mock it. But now that they actually have to discuss it on the merits, this is something that when people find out about it, instinctively they know something's wrong. All these hundreds of people who are here are coming from very diverse ideological backgrounds, just talking to different people. But everybody here knows something is deeply wrong about what's going on in there. And everybody is here coming well out of the way to drive here to protest for that very reason. So this is a game changer. The second thing that's happening, I think, is that you're seeing the, uh, the mask of oppression. It's showing a lot more. The fact that the security uh, is becoming a lot more intensified. The fact that you're actually seeing arrests today. Uh, the fact that they're pulling people over who are just driving by. Some people who don't even really know what's going on. Uh, the fact that you see people who are honking and then like the cops will like pull them over like down the road. I mean, this is all something genuinely new. And this is also something genuinely frightening. So that's why this is becoming a legitimate story. And that's why more and more people are becoming interested in it. Michael, you want... By the way, uh, it's got to be about 400 people now, 500. It's a lot bigger than I thought. Now that I'm standing out here, there's about, what, 250 yards of just solid people. There's more on the other side, more coming. They're not stopping people coming here. And I've been told the backlash of them trying to keep us uh, from getting here, that people all over the country are coming now. What do you make of that? And then, Well, it's remarkable because, one, this isn't a very convenient location. I mean, it's not like there's parking nearby or that it's easy to get here. People are getting dropped off from a long ways away and then walking over. Um, I, again, I think this, this kind of builds to my point. Once they open up this debate, it's a bad thing because people see it, they become interested, that's why they, they start showing up. Right. And once now, now that they actually have to argue against it, that's something they really can't win, just by the fact that they have to argue against it. Absolutely. And Michael Thompson. Well, I guess the only thing I would add is that right now, one of the top movies in the world is The Avengers. Who's all seen The Avengers? Everyone seen it? Did anybody uh, wonder why? The American government wasn't in that. It was some shadowy organization that uh, that that was that overheld uh, the shield. Anybody notice that? Alex, I, we were talking about that. It, uh, no, it's like office. NATO, and, and yeah. now the UN and NATO say they run our military treasonously. The uh, Sec Def gets up there and tells Congress, no, we might come to you, but the UN gives the orders. Obama says it, and that's what all the movies and children's shows, it's all shadowy global groups. Yeah. It's like Cobra runs things. Basically, Cobra took America over. Go ahead. So, and, and, and on that point, <laughs> yes, Cobra. I gotta go with it. Uh, the, the main point is the United States military refused to work with the Avengers film because they couldn't figure out who exactly is S.H.I.E.L.D. working for. And this is, uh, you know, and, and the military worked with Battleship. I mean, uh, that Rihanna film. But, uh, they're not working with the Avengers. The point is, uh, that film brought a lot of the aspects that you know, Alex talks about. Alex is doing such a great job, and I know he appreciates all you guys coming here and all that he's doing. Keep going, so. keep going. Keep well, going. Just, just get that mic closed. Okay. <laughs> I know that, uh, I know that you know, a lot of people over the years have, have laughed at the type of things that... Um, that, have, uh, that are being discussed here, that you guys are coming out to report on. The facts remain on, on, on our side. I'll say that without a doubt. The facts remain on our side. And uh, as more and more people are uh, becoming aware and realizing uh, what's transpiring behind closed doors, uh, you're going to start seeing more and more people want to join uh, this group. Yeah, and I think what's really important to remember now, when you're seeing this with the security, you're seeing this with the debate that's actually being happened, the mask is being ripped off. And now they're not even bothering to disguise it anymore. The agenda is there for all to see. And it's just a question of, at this point, whose side are you on? Tell us about the reportage going on at World Net Daily. Well, we were around here yesterday. I talked with uh, Adam Kokesh, who some of you might know, and uh, some other liberty activists. Uh, we talked with some of the protesters yesterday. We got some video of uh, 
the interaction, shall we say, with the uh, police and the security and everything else. And I think what's what's interesting about this is, I mean, now, yeah, you have the Associated Press coming and everything else, but the only real reporting that's being done as far as telling what the actual story is, uh, it's independent reporting, mostly web-based reporting. Uh, WND is proud to be a part of that, but it's, uh, frankly, a lot of citizen journalism as well. And I think what's, what's really changing here is more and more people, I mean, people say this all the time, it's almost become a cliche about how the mainstream media is being ignored, but now it's getting to the point where you have major stories that they literally will not cover, actively refuse to cover. They won't even talk about Michelle Obama or where she's going on vacation now. Right. And, and people, and more and more people are genuinely aware of this. I mean, you look at the comments and on any online news story or even a YouTube video or anything like that, you, you are really seeing this whole underground narrative that's spreading among the American people. This does represent something genuinely new and genuinely exciting. I agree. You guys want to duck into the woods here? Uh oh. Oh, really? They don't even let you duck into those now? Oh, uh, whatever. <laughs> oh, let's go over here. To the woods! Oh, hey, a tarp! Hey, a uh, hey, little water doesn't bother us, but sure, we're all in under here. But I mean, think about the magnitude of the fact that the system bet the farm on the fact that there's no shadow group, there's no foreign banks who want to take over, and now it's in The Economist magazine. We need technocrats that are unelected to run things. They have unelected bankers running most of the European countries now. Uh, most of the laws are now. Thank you guys, you're awesome. I don't mind some rain, but it'll, it'll short our equipment. Uh, all of this is happening, and the the shroud is being pulled back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, what they going? I've noticed since yesterday is that they've moved the barricades. You can't even get up close to the uh, to the entrance now. Tomorrow, uh, you're expecting what? Two thousand people? A couple thousand people? Who knows? Most people say they can't come till Friday night or Saturday or Sunday. Right. Well, and they got jobs. We got. Even, we have, with, even with the uh, right now, for for people who are just listening, it's uh, thundering and lightning in a second. Now it's pouring rain, but they're still. Easily double the people who were here yesterday. That was about 250 yesterday. I gotta say, conservatively, 500 and more are walking up all the time. Right. Get here, folks. Be part of history. And here, here's the thing to remember, especially just looking at the headlines. What's going on in Europe is kind of a model for what is being planned for the United States. Right now, people in Europe can discuss openly. People in Britain talk about this all the time. The fact that most of their laws are not made. By 83 percent. 83 percent. Right. And. What you're seeing in, what you saw in Greece with the reaction of the voters there and the reaction of voters in other places is this kind of furious populist reaction to the idea that they're not even in charge of their own financial destiny anymore. Yep. And that debate is coming here and it's a debate that can't be pushed away. And to show that this isn't a conspiracy theory, this is just the simple facts, you just got to glance at the headlines of the Wall Street Journal or the uh, New York Times about what's going on there, or The Economist for that this matter. This is a great... A great parable of life. All the patriots come together, and in seconds, we have a giant umbrella for everybody. <laughs> Folks are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's going up by our heat like a hot air balloon. Yeah. <laughs> I got to say, the crowd here. This has the uh, this has the atmosphere of a college football tailgate. It's exciting. I mean, this is history, as you said, Alex. And uh, I guess it's everybody coming together. It's not about left or right. It's about liberty. It's about freedom. It's about uh, controlling our own destiny and not being slaves. Yeah. It's about seventeen. 1976. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think Alex popularized a phrase and it's something that needs to be said again and again and again. The answer to 1984 is 1776. And I never forget that. And that's why they're afraid. They are afraid. They, know, I mean, listen, I got this from our source. They just said, yeah, I heard them cussing Ron Paul, and they get real mad. When they come through and get born, they, you know, the Bilderbergs just kind of, oh, that's Ron Paul people, because they understand <laughs> that's folks that are awake, anti-globalist, anti-New World Order, you know, patriots, old, old line, like, constitutionalists. But Tucker's source, and Tucker's always impeccable, said they were, yesterday, seconds after we bullhorned, like a minute after, they were yelling and going, I want Ron Paul and all his people on a plane, and I want to have a Muslim extremist blow it up. I mean, that shows how upset Bill Bloomberg is. They are angry. What do you say to that? One is one is tempted to remind uh, people of Larry McDonald. Uh, Newt Gingrich ended up taking his seat. No, no, it wasn't Gingrich. But the, point, the point is, he was like, he was. Yeah. It didn't happen. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Tell the story. Well, the the main point is, he, uh, the American Conservative Union, 
rated him to this day still one of the top conservative voting congressmen, though he was a Democrat. And uh, in 1983, he was going to a uh, event down in South Korea to commemorate the end of the Korean War with Jesse Helms and Orrin Hatch. And they were on a plane, uh, a connecting flight in Alaska. For some reason, Senator Hatch and Senator um, Helms get off and take a later flight. Well, Congressman McDonald gets on the flight and it's shot down over Russian airspace. The, the initial media report stated that it landed safely on Sakhalin Islands. Day later, it turns out everyone's dead. There's no, uh, they have no, um, they have no wreckage. They can't find anything. It's lost at sea. Bloomberg likes to do it, and so now they're like, I want to put eminent supporters on a plane and claim a, well, basically claim a Muslim extremist blew it up. That, uh, yeah, they don't have the Soviet, they don't have the Soviet Union anymore, so now it'll be Muslim extremists. I think that the, uh, <laughs> I think that, you know, when when people talk about these kinds of things, even they, they use this kind of rhetoric, I mean. This, this distrust of the establishment, this trust of the establishment of both parties, I mean, people's fear of dispossession economically, politically, you know, the, control, the loss of control over their own lives, you see more and more of this every single day. And it is now getting to the point where people can no longer afford to be comfortable. Your jobs are being shipped overseas. Your jobs are being taken away from you. Your pensions are going to be taken away from you. Our tax money pays to ship it overseas. Right, right. I mean, the people who rule you hate you. And you have to get that through your head. The people who rule you absolutely despise you. And they're, they're very angry when they hear any kind of dissent whatsoever. And so, I don't really put anything past them. Yeah, no, I mean, they're talking about killing Ron Paul, folks. We can spend this as they're joking in there. They are in cussing fits. And, and the people working in there, because we got this directly from the lobby area, are, are the, here are these world leaders just like really saying horrible things about Ron Paul and laughing about how they want to kill him and how they can do it. This should be investigated, but so should the Logan actor in there violating. Anything else you wanted to add about that? No, I just want to say to everyone here, keep keep doing a great job. Keep fighting for the truth. That's all that matters in uh, in this world is uh, fighting for the truth and, uh, and fighting for your posterity. That's why back in 1776, uh, you know, our founding fathers signed that document that said they're fighting for their life, liberty, and their sacred honor, and it was for their posterity. And that's what we are, guys. So don't stop. Yeah, absolutely. And, and go ahead. The one thing I would say is, you know, people are talking about the Logan Act and all these other uh, laws that they're breaking and everything else. It's remarkable about how overt that it now is. It's remarkable how they're not even bothering to conceal anything anymore. And I think if you can take one thing away from all of this is the fact that the mask is off, the agenda is there for all to see. Uh, there's no disguising it anymore. And so the only question is, what are you going to do about it? I agree with you. And by the way, I'm going to talk to the network real quick. Great got, uh, job, guys. WMD.com. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. Here with my crew, with the great folks. I mean, that audio's neat. You can hear the water pitter patting on top. Uh, Rob Dew, how's everything going there? Command Center on. It is sounding great, Alex. It's great that you're there with WorldNet Daily and others that are exposing.